Terongan ni kami resa umar me reil umar ngang urusan yang lino meta olopai. Ibu saya tengah malu lalu ngan ni kami masal terongan ni kami bawa fiti ye le itti Selena Roberto babauta bawa tolong boleh naik Congress. Nomor orangnya an balat ngeruo. Automat lihat lor nomor orangnya an balat ngeruo belan November walu belan barang musik yang penting ni. Aku sih uri ululunya an ngang belan House of Representatives. Esem mesah ehi bura ehi wana charmalian ehi kita ngai rala mika kacang an ehi meas government. Ebal senir, ebal senir be eno krisin tu, ebal abonar, alingi irsak kena we esabior be fermo belan fanyu kafanwas. Ehi wen wen te, ehi loko metak e kira, be ba mala be fermo belan nyas government. I aw yas hero belan fanyu kafanwas, balii. Ia hero atau tabuaya. Ia mesti negri mewah atau tabuaya bersih atau lengan Selina Roberto Babauta nomor dua lawan yang balat bersih buat atau lengan beberapa bayi as senator lawan eleksi ni sikit mungkin ni lawan November. Hilisso ni kami resa umar meri umar hilisso. Buenas, Northern Marianas. I'm Troy Torres. And I'm Vicky Lynn Turgato. Welcome to our studios here on the seventh floor of the DNA building in Hagatnia, Guam, where we're going to talk about elections, elections, elections in the Commonwealth. Yeah. Exciting times. Are you excited about the election? Um, I'm excited that it'll be over soon. Did you early vote or are you going to go no, vote on vote. the day of? Oh, you don't? Oh, no. okay. Why not? I'm on probation. I can't vote. That No, you, no you, federal probation. You can't vote. Are you sure? I'm positive. Are you sure it's not if you're incarcerated you can't no. vote? Well, Greg told me I couldn't. I think you should go and vote. It's your constitutional right to vote. It's only if you're incarcerated that That's you cannot vote. Judge Malone, but I can't vote. Oh, never mind. Let's not have this conversation here. <laughs> I'm not trying to piss off Judge Malone. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> thanks for your honesty. I, it's very much appreciated. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about the three gubernatorial teams and the three parties that, uh, I don't know, come election day, there might not be a clear winner. It might have to go into a runoff and what that might mean for the Commonwealth and all of the work that's been poured in, all of the effort, how exhausted everybody must be, uh, and maybe even some funny stuff when we come back from this commercial break. Stick with us. pandemic. <laughs> Gohu. Hadzi man gaigis in the first responder. Gohu. Safa. Say puntati puro mali. Again, uh, there's nothing to hide. In the fiscal year after Super Typhoon U2, while most people were suffering here, he barely stayed on island in the weeks and months after our islands were completely destroyed. He and his wife, flew approximately 16 times traveling, dining, and shopping extravagantly at taxpayer expense. Since becoming governor, Ralph Torres has taken over 100 trips by plane. He has also gone out on at least 85 trips by boat and cost the government approximately half a million dollars for himself alone. With all these travels by air and sea, when did the governor ever find time to govern? So much for nothing to hide. The boating trip that really takes the cake was the governor's three-week expedition to the Northern Islands in the middle of the pandemic. Deer were released into the wild illegally. The beach was set on fire. He had DPS search and rescue boats, utility vehicles, and police officers 
Governor Torres on vacation with family and friends, fishing, eating, and enjoying our beautiful northern islands at taxpayer expense. Holy smoke. Wow, this is awesome. Like that? Mm hmm Governor Ralph Torres, can you give us a word, please? Not right now. <laughs> This message is approved and paid for by the committee to elect Christina Sablon and Layla Staffler. Representative John Paul was instrumental in the success of NMTI. He was always there when we needed real help. Books, tools, equipment, even buses were all possible through his leadership. To reduce drug-related crime and recidivism, he co-sponsored legislation that established CNMI Drug Court. Director Manny Castro started his career at NMC in 2009. This was during the college's most difficult time when it was in danger of losing its accreditation. Always thinking in terms of possibilities and opportunities, Manny brings a high level of intellectual ability and innovation in all that he does, along with an ability to apply his knowledge to real world situation. It's no coincidence that NMC continued growth in students' enrollment coincides with Director Manny's initiative and effort. John Paul and Manny are humble men that have always taken a personal interest in the long-term development of our people. This election, please vote John Paul Palacio Sablan and Manny Gregory Tenorio Castro Pressing two candidates for CNMI House of Representatives. Alpha Day, Tiro. My name is Arno I. Palacios. I'm running for governor with Mayor David Apatang. This election would be a defining moment for the Commonwealth. We urge you to go out and vote so that we can rebuild the trust in our government, we can rebuild a sustainable economy for the Commonwealth, and rebuild a future for our people. We are number two on the ballot. Please vote all the AD independent candidates that are running in this election so that we can rebuild the Commonwealth to what it's supposed to be. Thank you. Jesus Masi Olomoy. Remember, number two on the ballot, AD 2022. Alpha Day Zantiro. Wahoo Sid Mundo Apatang. Palalagazu Palitena Governor. Mahami Mona Zan Si Litena Governor Palacios. Under the AD team, number two, 22. Put for board and Gagago Todu Samzonita Tomarianas near Zudun Mizu. Now here I'm listing up with the need that the Tafanazo de Mona, the Benazuda Tordo Samzuni Tautauta Ginnig Zamrianas. I have swung in November the Otsu, number two on the ballot, B by AD, B by Palacios Apteng, 2022. Don't call on a Chizu Smosi, in Sengwai Zai Hamzu Ginnizalo Lunkurson Mummy. A Biba Zanta Sopota, Arno Zande. Welcome back. Uh, so unless you see uh, one of us reading directly, like we're looking at you and like we're doing this whole monologue and we're not saying um or laughing or whatever. <coughs> when we do that, that means that we're reading into a script, a script, a yeah. teleprompter. But when you don't see us doing that, that means that we're just having an unscripted conversation and we never practice it so like i'm going to be asking vicky lynn a bunch of things and she may ask me things and whatever we answered this is unscripted un like i have no idea what she's going to say she has no idea what i'm going to say and so that's what makes things fun huh 
<laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So my first question for you is, um, what is the sense uh, over in the CNMI? Is there going to be a runoff election for governor or is someone going to win outright? Um, what I've been hearing is that they think it's going to come to a runoff. A runoff. Okay. Yeah. And who is the, which team do people feel is not going to make the cut? Oh, Ralph. The, okay, yeah, yeah. so so is there there's a sense that the Groups. corruption stuff has really done him in? Yeah, like he's he's basically out, and the only reason why people are at his stuff is because they have to work. They don't want to lose their jobs. So they're so, afraid? Yeah. Okay, okay. Is that real, that, that culture of, uh, I guess, intimidation or climate of fear among government employees that if they don't show their support? Isn't it everywhere, though? It is here, that's that's yeah. for sure. So it is, all right. What are people, what have people been saying about the corruption stuff? We saw the billboards that went up, right? Yeah, I think people are tired of it. It's not, it's, he, you see him living his life so lavishly and everybody else is suffering, you know? But what's the lavish life that he leads? Like, I'm, I'm not from their side, I don't know. I didn't get to see his house when I was I there. I mean, did you not see that video? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's tired, but everybody else is tired now, so. He and so people are willing to make that change? I would hope so, and if they are not, then I. Then problems kind for the Commonwealth. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so they feel, people feel that it's going to be a runoff between oh. Arnold Palacios and Tina Sablan. Yes. Before we get to the race between Arnold Palacios and Tina Sablan, I want to bring up the billboards that went up today. I know at least one of the billboards went up today, right? The twenty-three thousand dollar one, the travel, oh, the travel yeah. voucher. I think so. Yeah. It went up a. a opposite side of the of beach road from um the mayor's office in saipan is what i understand i don't know if the other one went up that showed the hundred nineteen thousand dollar cuc bill but cuc felt the need to get political today and oh, they yeah yeah the their statement yes their statement let me read this statement that cuc sent out it's a very interesting statement it says, we have received information that members of the public continue to be misinformed about Governor Torres's CUC account number 82273. CUC had conducted its due diligence and made its determination. The investigation revealed that there has been no theft and all water consumptions were reconciled, billed, and settled accordingly. These facts were stated at the legislative hearings. To be clear, the governor's account has been applied consistent with Commonwealth law. You know what I didn't see in this statement? That the bill was actually paid. Yeah. They don't say that the bill was actually paid. And so, and of course, the other thing is the statement that whoever made that billboard was saying is that there was this point in time, and it was during the impeachment hearings, or during 2021, I think it was, where Governor Torres owed $119,000 in, uh, in uh, power and water bill. $116,000 of that was in arrears. And who does not get their power disconnected if they're in arrears. No one has arrears of that much in the Commonwealth, first of all, except for Governor Ralph Torres. Yeah, except for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one. That's allowed to have his, his account in arrears and CUC, including Gary Camacho, allowed it to happen. And so, you know, anyway, whoever did that, whoever put that billboard up, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, cheers. What are people saying about the billboards? I, well, they kind of knew from the hearings, but then seeing it up there, I guess it makes them think about like voting when they're going to vote. Makes them think about it a little bit more. Are Are you aware that uh, about nine hundred people on average per day are early voting, and they expect that there will be by the time the election happens, six six thousand people would have early voted in the Commonwealth? Did you know about that? No. No, this, that's an interesting figure. Do you know? You want to know what's more interesting is that drive-through voting. What, can you tell me about that? What is that drive-through voting? So they are saying that you get to go in your car and drive through like a restaurant. You know, like McDonald's, you drive through and you order, you drive through and you vote. Yeah, but do they check your ID? Do they? Yeah, they'll see your ID. Oh, I think it's only one person per car too. Okay. So you would have to, if you had to, you got to get down and then do it again. But and then if you trust the person who's going to bring the ballot, then they can you could follow them or they could bring it themselves. But can you just imagine exactly like what would happen in between that walk? or it, do they change the ballots or do they look at the ballots? Maybe they seal it and they put the, they, they highlight something know. and they have you sign something like an early voting here. When you submit your ballot, you seal it in an envelope and they, they tape it. There's a, a special tape that they use and then they mark do over they? it and then you sign over both the tape and the regular portion of the envelope. 
so that they know if it's been tampered with. Do they? That's what happens here when you early vote. So uh, you guys drive through vote here? No, no, not drive through. Oh. But they have, you know, in, in terms of the handling of the ballot itself. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how it works with the drive through one, though. Yeah. It doesn't sound like something I would do. <laughs> no, like, can you just imagine how much, like, man. Potential for misconduct? Yeah. I, well, I hope a lot of people are not or doing like that then. Ballots from not in things. So all right, so let's talk about the Tina and Arnold race then. If if what you're saying is true that Ralph Torres would be eliminated in the, not what I'm saying, what I've right oh, what you what you've yeah, heard. Yes, if yes. what you're saying is true from what you've heard, yes, that uh, it will come down to a runoff election between Arnold Palacios and Tina Sublon. Let's not. Let me not ask you who you think will win. Let first let me ask you what you, what people are saying about each of these candidates. What are people's criticisms of Tina Sublon? That you've heard mostly that she's female that's really really about it. yes and then that's interesting and then not until not until you were telling me yesterday about how you think or you heard also that all all the ralph people are going to go to tina because of how arnold ran against ralph yeah there's some deep-seated anger between those two camps and if it came to a runoff what it i've would, been hearing is that, tina, is that yeah. the ralph torres voters would vote for tina sablon rather than Arnold Palacios because of the hatred between the two. Those two. Do you think, though, the hatred goes to the voters or it's just between them? I don't know. Uh, but let, let me ask you that. How how loyal are Ralph Torres' voters to Ralph Torres? Like, if Ralph Torres, after losing the election, says, I want my supporters to go and support this person, will they go and support that person? Is that I how really it works? I don't feel like he would say that, though. Yeah, I feel like he'd be a bad sport. No, no, but, but, but in a quiet way. He doesn't have to say it on a microphone, but he'll, like, call his village leaders or whatever and say, hey, I want you guys to vote for whoever, right? I guess. I just feel, I feel like he would be a bad sport and, like, just don't vote, fuck all, or forget everybody, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, and I'm sorry about that word. But I think, yeah, he probably would. So, wait, the, the criticism that people have about Tina Sublime is that she's mostly, a woman? Mostly, yes, mostly. Or that she's really straightforward, or, like, she's, like, a straight... Like, That's she criticism. can't look, like, re go outside the box, you know? I see. Okay, okay. I, I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Okay, now, what are the criticisms that people have about Arnold Palacios? That he has betrayed the governor. Do you see? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. if he can do that to his... Imagine what else he can do. Oh, that is and interesting. He, and also that he just sat by while everything was happening. We know how only Ralph was getting charged. Like, he sat by. He knew what was going on. But he just. But do they do they give him a pass because he he did the lieutenant governor came out and he said and he admitted that he said, you know my regret is that this happened while I was the lieutenant governor and I should have said something earlier and I'm sorry he apologized for it. Do people give him a pass? Oh, I'm not for sure. For recognizing that. Yeah, I guess he had no choice but to. Had, yeah, what what can he do? Right? Yeah, he ha you. Oh, had, he could have spoken up, and yes. but he said so. He said I could have spoken up, and I didn't. And for that, I'm sorry. What else would he have said? With if not, I could have. He could have spoken up. He had to. He had no choice. But if say Ralph never got caught, he would have never said anything. Oh. He would have just sat back and let it all happen. I see. You know, I, see. I feel like I feel like other people could lead for him, not he could lead for himself. Okay. So, now, do people have? Um, does it? Let me ask you, does the lieutenant governor candidate matter to the voters of the Commonwealth? Mm. Or do, they, do the voters just look at the governor candidate? Well, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Now, for, for Tina and Leila, mm -hmm. I think that they're looking at both. Okay. But then if you like think about Arnold and Ralph, or you don't really look at the lieutenant. Okay. I guess it's because with Tina and Leila, they're the first two to run, right? Yeah. But then it's also like Ralph and Arnold are the first lieutenant and governor and governor to challenge each other. Okay, right? okay. In the cinema, I think so. I don't know. No I, no, I think there's been a lieutenant governor who's challenged a governor before. Who? I think uh, Lieutenant Governor Borja challenged governor. Who was that? Zach? Was it Fernando? It was, so I think it was, um, yes, I think Governor Froilan Sonora was the governor and his lieutenant governor Borja challenged him. And then uh, Benigno Fitial entered the race, and I believe Governor Fitial that was the first term that he won. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Uh, I, I just, Jesus Borja, I think, was his name. Lieutenant Governor Jesus Borja, right? So you see, like, you don't even remember that name. 
You know, oh. it's, it's always just the governors, but lead, with Leila and Tina. So people look at them oh, as a ticket. Yes. Why is that? I'm not sure. It, there's There could be many things because... Is it because they're always together, campaigning together? Maybe, or maybe it's just because that's the fact that they're female. Or maybe it's because they're just out there, you know? Okay. Like, Tina may be straight, straight, a straight hour, but like Leila is like out there. So they make a really good team. I see. Yeah. And are they... Uh, well, well, first, let me just ask. Because when I met Dave Apatang, Sai Mirror, and when I saw him, when I, the last Thanksgiving, when he did that Apatang Thanksgiving thing, I just, honestly, I just fell in love with the, the whole, like, thing about... There's Apatang's giving. <laughs> There's Mary Apatang's. <laughs> what a nice guy, you know? Like, he, he must be popular. He, yes. Well, from who, who the people I speak to, yes, he is really well liked. I mean, he's getting old. Okay. But okay. Is that an issue to people? His age? Uh, well, maybe, yeah, because of his health, but. What about the lieutenant governor's health? Is Has that become an issue? Arnold? Yeah. Oh. Uh, we can remember the health scare that he had. He, well, something else was happening that day. What was it? Um, there was the trial. And he was just, they said that he was just scared, so he just like... That's what people are saying? Yeah. All right, now, what about presence in the community? The door-to-door, -door, the, you know, going out and meeting people. Who, which team between Tina and Layla and Arnold and Dave are doing that more? I've heard more of Tina and Layla. Going door-to-door? -door yes. The grassroots not, not, campaign? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ar the Arnold and Dave team, when they were in here and they did their... Um, their interview with us, they told us that their grassroots campaign is where it's at and that they are doing the door-to-door -door stuff. But so what you're saying is you've really heard it. Well, they're more advertised, I guess, okay. Tina and Leila. Like you see them everywhere. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. Okay, okay. Uh, but I don't really see that much with the independent team. Okay. When I was in Saipan, the majority of the signs and the, act the political activity that I saw was actually the Republicans. Oh yeah, of course, because they're just like, they have to have that, you know? They need it. So it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that that's their support is there. I'm, aren't they the ones that's putting up with themselves? Well, on Guam, right? Like the bigger the rally that you have, the more people you have at your wave, um, and the more signs that you have is a general indication of who's going to win the election. You think so? Because on well, Guam, on last Guam. the last election, I remember the Republicans had cars like lined up from Kagman all the way down to I don't know where, but they lost. They lost, yeah. 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 The Democrats ended up taking the yep. House, yep. and then in the special election, Karina Magofnia won, despite yep. Grace Vaige having, you know, much larger numbers. Yeah, because in, in like Saipan, they put their, their kids' cars there, people who can't vote there, they just add it up just to make it look... I For appearances? Know, I guess. Mm -mm. Now, what about the... <clears throat> I don't know if you want to call it excitement or if you want to call it craziness of the election. How excited or crazy are things getting there? Did you not see that video of Nola? She's all like <laughs> breaking down, side of the road, like, hey. Now, there's a video, there's a video, but this is a, a few months old and it was at a pocket meeting. If oh, I'm that not wasn't just today? I felt no, like that was today. No, 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 the, the Nola one was just today. Oh, okay. But there's this other video and it's my favorite, it's like of all the campaign Cuxica videos that I've seen coming out of the scene my, this one's my favorite one. And it was taken in at a pocket meeting in Tinian. I think it was for the independents. I'm not sure if this was for the Arnold and Dave team or if this was for the Democrats, but go ahead and play it. It's, I, I sent it in the show lineup chat. It's, uh, it's the, the one with the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? A Republican man sucking a god. Apanelos, <laughs> dispensa. That's my favorite one. I love how people just speak in their minds. She was like, give me that microphone. I've got something to say. I have got something to talk about tonight. <laughs> who was that? Did you say that's Frank Borja? I think, or I don't know. Sure. I don't know. I didn't see. I don't see. know who that is. I, I, I think know, it I was I don't, I don't the speaker, not, uh, not, not the lady, right? Do you know the Josephine? lady's name? I think it's Josephine. I think, I don't know. These Aren't you, these are your relatives? Yeah, You're from Tinian. Yeah, oh my God, thanks. Troy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> fun times. We did a show earlier about all the fun stuff happening on Guam and Guam's elections are just as coxica as the as the scene of my elections man I'm just ready for it to be over I think everybody's ready for it it's to be over it's, it's taken out so much you see so much ugly and so much people and it's just ugly like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah there, there's, there's been a lot of ugliness um, 
Uh, and there's also been uh, shining moments for uh, people. There's the debates that have happened. I mean, there's a lot that people can pull from. To, if you're undecided, you haven't made your choice yet, uh, or you're trying to play strategy with your vote or whatever it is, you know, go out and vote on November 8th, Tuesday. Go to your polling site and uh, make your choice known because uh, it's just this one day we get every four years, just one day where our voices get to count. And it's on election day when it comes to who's going to be the governor, who do we want leading the executive branch on our behalf. And, uh, and, 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 and that's for me, it'll be on Guam. For Vicky Lin, CMI. it's for in the CNMI. And, but our elections are held on the same day and we'll be covering both. And let's just see how it all turns out. Let's see what your voice says uh, about where you want Guam and the CNMI to go. Do you have anything else? No. No, we're good? Yeah. Our CNMI election coverage. Thank you so much for uh, giving us no. some insight into what's going on in the Commonwealth. Well, what I hear, I don't know what's going on. Because yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. has like all kinds of different stories. People ask me a lot, like what's going on in the, and you know on Guam, Here's an interesting thing, because on Guam, we're used to, like I said, whoever has the bigger rallies, the motorcades, the most signs, et cetera, is who we think is generally going to win, right? And so when we have that type of, um, of mentality, um, what happens is when we look at the election over in the CNMI, a lot of people, actually every single person who has been following the CNMI elections from Guam, who is from Guam and has asked me about it, says that they think that Ralph Torres is going to win the election. Oh, because of his markets and all the signs and everything? Yeah, yeah. And, and I tell them, I, I'm like, well, people in the CNMI tell me something different. They tell me either Arnold's going to win or Tina's going to win. So very interesting. And then people in the CNMI who, have, who talk to me about the election on Guam, they say to me that they believe that Luliang Guerrero is going to win the election here. And I, I would say, I, you know, in Guam, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. I anywhere you would never know anywhere and even like how that guy said i was a republican at heart i would never vote down the line like oh, yeah, straight yeah. down i would let me just tell you right now if 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 when i vote if i vote it would be zigzag because i would never believe like in each person in a certain yeah. party you know? same here i don't think anybody would. mine's a zigzag vote as well yeah yeah zigzag. for sure for sure parties mean nothing yeah anyway thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you very much vicky lynn no problem and thanks, thanks for, for being me. a being a great sport here while you've been on yeah. we really appreciate it. we love you so much <laughs> for candid news i'm troy torres and i'm vicky lynn Turgazo. good night My name is Arnold I. Palacios. I'm running for governor with Mayor David Apatang. This election would be a defining moment for the Commonwealth. We urge you to go out and vote so that we can rebuild the trust in our government. We can rebuild a sustainable economy for the Commonwealth and rebuild a future for our people. We are number two on the ballot. Please vote all the AD independent candidates that are running in this election so that we can rebuild the Commonwealth to what it's supposed to be. Thank you. Jesus Masi Olomoy. Remember, number two on the ballot, AD 2022. Alpha Day Zantiro. Wahoo si David Mundo Apatang, Malalagazo pa Lieutenant Governor, Mahami Mona dan si Lieutenant Governor Palacios, under the AD team, number 222. Puffer board and gagago todo samjonita to Marianas ni Azudun Mizu, now here I'm nesting a putinidad at the Fanazo da Mona, the Benazuda todo samjonita to Tagunik Zamarianas. I have swung in November dia Otsu, number two in the ballot, B by AD, B by Palacios Apteng 2022. Don't call on a Jesus Mosse in Sungwa Zai Representative John Paul was instrumental in the success of NMTI. 
He was always there when we needed real help. Books, tools, equipment, even buses were all possible through his leadership. To reduce drug-related crime and recidivism, he co-sponsored legislation that established CNMI Drug Court. Director Manny Castro started his career at NMC in 2009. This was during the college's most difficult time when it was in danger of losing its accreditation. Always thinking in terms of possibilities and opportunities, Manny brings a high level of intellectual ability and innovation in all that he does, along with an ability to apply his knowledge to real-world situation. It's no coincidence that NMC continued growth in students' enrollment coincides with Director Manny's initiative and effort. John Paul and Manny are humble men that have always taken a personal interest in the long-term development of our people. This election, please vote John Paul Palacios Blan and Manny Gregory Tenorio Castro, pressing two candidates for CRMI House of Representatives. We have important decisions to make about our leadership in government and the kind of future we want for our commonwealth. We can choose the same old leadership and we will get the same old school politics. We now have a governor who's been raided by the FBI, impeached by the House, and is facing criminal charges. We have a failed, unfinished casino in the heart of Garapan, and an administration that's run deficits for six straight years and is still spending money like there's no tomorrow. Or we can choose to change. Vote for leaders you can trust. Leaders who won't lie to you or steal from you. Vote for Layla and me, and we will help and work for everyone. Layla and I are number one on the ballot, and we humbly ask for your support. This message is approved and paid for by the committee to elect Christina Sablon and Layla Staffler. Imushan <laughs> House of Representatives, a Mesach, a Hibura, a Hibuna Tarmalian, a Wikita, Nairala, Mikaga Tanganigus, Mias government. A Balsenir, a Balsenir may end up preaching too. The Balamonar, a Langer Sakana, where a Sabior, the Ferno, Balanfanu Kafanwas. A Yuan Wanate, a Lukometaka, a Kaira. Baba Mala, the Ferno, Melania's government. E. Oyash, hero, Melan Fanu Kafanwash. Bali, ye hero. Ato Tabue. E. Amusenegim about Tabue, was you Atolene, Selina, Roberto, Babauta, Nomro Ruo, Lanyan Ballad, Visi Watolene, Webono Boye as senator. Lan election is secured in November. It is so many, 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 it is so